In this next section of training, uh, we're going to do a little project and we're going to be learning about the daylight system inside of 3D Studio Max and how to use that and how it integrates with the mental ray rendering system as well. And also to help us finish that off, we're going to be discussing the exposure control that also comes with 3D Studio Max. So we're kind of looking at sort of two or three things at once here. And the best way to look at them is instead of taking them out and looking, them at, looking at them as separate things, we're going to look at them as one project. Okay, so we've got a little scene here that I did for a client a while ago. Uh, it was just a very rough uh, model uh, of an, a set of apartment blocks that were going to be part of a, uh, a development in the Middle East. Uh, there's a lot of building work going on out there. This particular piece uh, wasn't going to be a uh, huge detail, it wasn't going to be sort of close up, it just needed to be at the level it was at. So that's it. All fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Um, one thing I might do is just very quickly go away and make that ground plane a little bit bigger. So I think I'll just pause the video and then I'll come back in a second. Okay, so let's just tidy that up a little bit. I just wanted somewhere that we could see shadows on there really, that was all. So the daylight system in 3D Studio Max can be found by going to create and all the way over here at the end we've got these two little gears and they are systems. If we click on that, you'll see we've got a couple of options in here. Please don't click on sunlight because what will happen is you'll get the wrong thing. You won't get the whole daylight system coming in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to be using the daylight system. And the first thing I'm going to be asked is that I'm creating a daylight system and that it's recommended that I use, now it says here the logarithmic exposure control. Actually, it's uh, supposed to say the um, photographic exposure control, but never mind. Um, so yes, I'll set that now. And what I'm going to do to create this is I'm going to left click somewhere in my viewport and drag very, very slightly. And that's going to create this thing called the compass rose. I've still got my finger on the left mouse button. I'm going to let go. That's going to create my sun and my sky. And then I'm going to just drag off to the left as far as I can and then press the left mouse button because like the um, the skylight this is a sticky key I want to right click in a bit of blank space and that's going to stop me from creating my um, sky system anymore and then we can just step back and have a little bit of a look at this well the first thing that we've got to say here is this is my compass rose okay now the idea with this lighting system is that you don't position the light yourself. What you do is you use your rotation and you match this to where north is going to be. Okay, on your on your uh, your drawing. So say north is going to be over here. That's cool. So we've got that matched up. What you then have to do is click on the light itself. And if I was using this with scanline, I'd leave it as it is but I'm not going to get the same result with the scanline as I'm going to get with mental ray. Mental ray will give me a much, much better result. So I'll have to go to my Modify tab. And you see here I've got Sunlight and Skylight. I've got them both set as standard. From this drop down, I'm going to pick the Mental Ray Sun. And I'm also going to pick the Mental Ray Sky. When I do that, I'll be recommended to add a physical sky into the background. Now part of the reason for this is that Mental Ray uses the background you have in your environment. Remember up until now we've had a black background? Well, what we're going to be getting with this is a coloured background. It's going to be a gradient from sort of light, very light blue through to a slightly fuller blue. And we're going to have a ground colour which is going to be a, a sort of a dark greyish as well. And really this is so that Mental Ray can use that gradient to help colourise the images and the exterior renders that we're going to be getting out of this. So yes, I definitely want to be working with that. There we go. Very nearly done. What I've got to do is just change one or two more things here. You can see that I can click manual and I could uh, position the light wherever I wanted to myself, but really that's not going to give me uh, an accurate representation of the daylight in this um, in this animation or in, the, in this scene rather uh, and, and really it's, it's, it's not what I want to do, it's, it kind of negates the whole point of using this system 
Uh, I could lo load a weather data file if I had one, uh, or I'm going to do what I'm going to do here, which is a, a date and time location setup. So without worrying about anything else in here, I'm just going to go straight to setup. And I've got hours and months of the day, but I've also got a location down here. Currently, my, my location is set to San Francisco. Well, I'm not actually in San Francisco, so I'm going to say get location. And I'm going to pick not from North America, but from Europe. Now, if I click here, I could go to the nearest big city, which is uh, London. I'm actually just outside London. I'm just to the west of London, so I'm going to... I'm about... A little bit down from there, that's more Oxford. I'm about there. It's about as close as I'm going to get. So that's really where I am at the moment in the UK. So I'll click OK and I'll accept that. And now what I have to do is to pick uh, a month and a time of day, really. So I'm going to say that the month is October. And we'll make that maybe, I don't know, October the 1st. And maybe the time of day is 1,500 hours. Now, I can even go down to saying it's 1515. So there you go. Not that we'd be finding a, 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 an apartment building that was meant for Dubai with this kind of lighting situation. But, you know, it, it, it just proves the point. So now I've set up my date and time. I can go back to my Modify tab and we can just have a look at a few of the settings here. We'll close that down. Um, what we're saying here with our, our daylight characteristics, yeah, with our some basic parameters, we can up the multiplier value for it if we need to. We, we're not going to, but we could do. Um, the shadows have got a softness. The samples on the shadows, depending on uh, how close we're getting to an object, if we increase the number of samples, we'd have much more accurate shadows. Because the distance we are away from this object, I don't think it really matters a huge amount. Um, some photons, we're going to keep this with um, the photon target switched off. Uh, and what that will do is that will then use the settings that we've got in our render settings dialog as opposed to having them set specifically from the light. The sky model here, we've got haze driven, uh, we've got a Perez or weather, or we've got a CIE. Um, the the Perez or weather is kind of a general one, and the CIE is if you're going to be using uh, any weather data. Uh, so for us, we're just going to go for a haze-driven system. Gives a nice sort of idea. Um, the haze-driven system, uh, how much haze do we want? So we can decide, do we want haze, do we not want haze? Um, might put a little bit in there, maybe a 0 0.15. The horizon that we will see within our our, um, our render, we can drop that down or raise it up depending on how much ground influence we want or how much sky influence we want. And we've got some non-physical tuning here. Uh, really, I, I'd stay away from this because you can, um, you can almost randomly um, colorize your images using that. We've also got a visibility distance here, which means you know at that distance away from the camera, we're going to start getting a haze appear. And then we're down into some basic um, calculations for the light here. Really, our global manipulators, if we leave these at one, what we're going to be doing, and we leave our light shaders at one, is we're going to be leaving everything onto our render setup. So that's pretty much what we want. Speaking of our render setup, I'll click that now. And I'll make sure that I'm using my mental ray renderer. As I mentioned, I said you go to the common tab, you go to assign renderer, click on the three dots next to production and then we're into our rent mental race setup. There's a couple of things I'm going to do in here that I'm, I'm literally just going to do, uh, and you can follow them, and then we'll talk about the, uh, the render setups a little bit later, because we are talk going to talk about optimizing um, mental ray in a few moments, well, in a couple of uh, videos' time. Okay, so going to our indirect illumination, what I'm going to do is make sure that enable final gather is switched on, you can see that I'm just going to set it to low because otherwise you'll be here all day waiting for um, the results of that to finish. Again, we'll talk in a little bit more detail about that later. Um, we don't need to worry about caustics or global illumination because this is an exterior shot. And again, we'll talk about some of these settings with the, the, the reusing the final um, gather later on. 
So the next thing I'll do is I'll come to my four views where I will now be able to see my render. There we go, there's my view, that's what I'm going to be rendering. And I might select that camera. Let's just select it. There we go, make sure it's set at 35 millimeters. Pull that out, I might actually make that a 24 millimeter lens. A little bit more wide angle, so it's giving us a little bit more perspective here. I realise that property developers are going to be screaming up and down the um, length and breadth of the country now that they hear that, but there you go, they always like things to be flat. Right, so a little bit of perspective in there with our uh, slightly wider angle camera. And now all I really need to do is to set my exposure control. So I'm going to go to rendering and I'm going to go to environment and my common parameters are fine. Um, I really don't need a, a logarithmic exposure control here. What I should be using is the mental ray photographic exposure control. I think the reason why I came up with logarithmic is because I was using um, the scanline renderer before. If I'd have come up and said, oh yes, I'm now using um, the mental ray renderer, and then I put the skylight in, it would have automatically come in and said, use the, the photographic exposure control. So there we go, there's my photographic exposure control. And I get to pick from a whole bunch of presets, so nice and, nice and easy. If I knew a little bit about um, photography, I could play around with that. Again, I'll talk about these in a little bit more detail a bit later on. I just want to get us through this to begin with. My preset, based on lighting, outdoor, daylight, clear sky, that's pretty much us really, isn't it? So we'll do that, and I just want to check it. I'm going to do a little render preview here. So we've got a little bit of a, a preview going on. It's very, very small. It's going to give us an idea of what we're going to get as an output. And there you go. That's what it's going to look like. So I kind of quite like that lighting level. So I'll press render and I'll see what our final image is actually going to look like. You can see what happens here is we've got a couple of things going on. It kind of appears to be building the render. And what this is, is this is a, a three or four stage lighting pass. So we're building the lighting more and more accurately as we go through here until we get to the point where we then get to do a render, which is what we're now into. So you can see this is taking a few moments here just to go through all that rendering. And we're nearly done. And there we go. Simple, easy. We've got some nice shadows going on there. I can, if I want to, just take this camera, move that out of the way. I sort of want to grab that. Take the camera and um, move it around different direction there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my active degradation or active degradation with this and we'll orbit the camera around and we'll look at it from here. Now what you're really going to like about this one is if I just pull back there. There we go. And I'll I won't worry about doing any of this again. I'm just going to render again straight off the bat. So all that backside of that building is now going to be in shadow. But it's really just to show you, you know, how useful this system is. In that even though I'm, I've got, you know, I'm looking with the sun coming towards me, this may well be what the building will look like. That may well be, you know, the angle that the sun's going to be in. You shouldn't just sort of say, well, you know, here you go. This is nice, bright sun. And, you know, show what it's going to look like in shadow. There's obviously not as much detail on the back end of this um, building because it was only ever meant to be from one angle. We've got a little bit of detail creeping in there, but not much. And there you go, you see? Really nice and even. We've got it locked down onto the, uh, onto the ground. Looks absolutely great. If I had decided... Let's just come back around here. And we'll just move the camera angle a little bit. There we go. If I had decided that I wanted to pick a different time of day and a different time of year, I could do so. 
go to my setup date time location and I'll make this a little bit earlier on in the year so there we go sun's a little bit higher in the sky still going to keep the same settings over here and I'll just press render we're a little bit closer you can see here that uh, the sun's obviously going to be higher in the sky it's a warm, warmer time of year and everything's going to be a little bit brighter uh, and you can see that being reflected even now in the detail that we're getting in this render it's uh, just going to take a few moments to come through and uh, what I might do is just press pause for a moment so now that's finished you can see we've got really nice sort of shadows in here really nice lighting um, okay -ish camera angle but I mean that's really how simple and how easy it is to set up our daylight system and to get a very quick render out.